Hello and welcome to another episode of the VM Blog Expert video interview series. Today we're very happy to have with us the CEO of Luminati, Or Lenchner. How are you doing today? Great, David. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We're glad to have you. So would you mind to kind of kick things off? Can you maybe give viewers a quick background on the company and, and what you guys do? Sure. So Luminati Networks is an online data collection platform. Today, we work with over 10,000 customers across almost every possible sector, including e-commerce, online travel, brand protection industry, finance industry, and many more. Uh, we're 160 employees and growing. Most of us are here in Israel, but we have employees all around the world. Luminati was founded at uh, 2014 and got acquired by EMK Capital, which is a private equity firm from the UK, in late 2017. Now, what we're doing is helping these 10,000 customers to gather publicly available online data in a responsible manner. So these companies, which including the biggest brands in the world, need this crucial and in many cases also actionable data to make critical decisions. So if in previous days, let's take an example, in the physical world, let's say you own the physical um, supermarket store or a grocery store, for example, Usually, once in a while, you would take one of your employees with a notepad and a pen and send them to your competitor's uh, grocery store or supermarket to take some notes to, to see what are the prices of these specific products, to try to see what the consumers are actually buying, what is now in, in special offer, and so on. And then this employee would come back, you would take a look at the notes and get decisions, business decisions, how to reprice your own product, what to sell more, maybe what to take off the shelf, and so on. Uh, this is what we're basically helping to our customers to achieve, obviously, in the online ecosystem. And, and so why is online data collection, uh, why has it become so you know, critical more now than ever in 2020? Yeah, so, we're, I mean, it, this, these are unprecedented times, right? Everything is mo moving so fast, especially in the notorious year of 2020. It's very hard to anticipate the changes, but it's also always true for businesses, right? So in, in old days, again, where, where decisions were made based on quarterly analyst reports, for example. So things like that, that uh, today are becoming more and more obsolete, so when you want to make a business move, and I'm not only talking about this room with the board of directors trying to understand what to do next, uh, what is the next big thing they need to do. No, I'm talking about machines and computers and pieces of code that need to decide now in real time how to reprice the product, what to show to that user and so on. So when you need to get these automated decisions, you need to rely on live data which basically reflects the consumer reality. So a good example can be competitive pricing, right? We have lots of e-commerce uh, companies that need to understand how to reprice constantly the products that they currently care about. And it became a criti critical infrastructure for them because it's all about winning or losing that, that specific deal, but it's also about all of the deals, right? And, and what are the current market challenges that data collection can help companies address? Yeah, so the, the most broad challenge, and it's pretty much true for every single company that has some online presence, is to be able to see the World Wide Web, the Internet, from the consumer's point of view, right? So it's, it's getting harder and harder for two main reasons. The first one is that websites that hold that publicly available data will try to block the access of these machines to collect that data, okay? Uh, even though that these websites will probably do the same and try to collect data on their own. Uh, so you need to be able to overcome these blockages and to get gain transparency again. And the second issue is that everything that you see online, I will see differently, okay? Every, almost every user is seeing different things in the same website, so it's all very segmented and different for each and every user. So you need to have the ability to approach your website as if you are a user from the US, from Tel Aviv, from anywhere on the world using different devices. It's a big challenge, but that's the only way to see the reality, to see the absolute truth, okay? or to have this unbiased overview. 
Um, a good example is from the online travel industry. Uh, this is also a big use case for Illuminati. And in these days with COVID and everything, these guys are not very happy. I mean, businesses are down, no one is flying, only domestically, no, not, not many hotel bookings and so on. So more than ever, the challenge is to stay competitive because they can't afford losing a deal. And when a consumer is going to their website, he is also going to five other competitive, competitor websites. And the user will, will book the hotel uh, domestically in this case if it will be $2 cheaper. Okay, so you need to make sure that you're $2 cheaper. And the only way to do it is to look around. You covered a lot of, uh, you know, things there, but if we, if we want to dive in a little bit more, like if, you know, talking about data collection, how can it help companies navigate as they plan, you know, for the future? Yeah, sure. So usually when you plan for the future, you, you're doing it on your past data that you, you maintain and keep and track, which is fine. You should do it. And on your current data, which again is fine and you should always do it, but it's only half truth. It's only half of the picture, half of the story. So to be able to plan to the future again, you need to look around and a good analogy can be that think of on the US government fighting COVID. You can do it only by analyzing the domestic cases, but it's half of the story. It's like an e-commerce website that will work only based on his internal traffic. It makes sense, and I'm sure that no one will argue that it will be way more effective to talk to other countries, to those countries that did it before, that already fighting COVID for two months and so on. So same things in the online world. So if you can talk, at least open your eyes and look around and collect the data that others are producing. This will allow you to plan way better for the future. And looking specifically at one of Luminati's use cases, e-commerce uh, data collection. What are we witnessing today and how do we expect it to impact the future of this industry domain? Yeah, so e-commerce is really the, the biggest um, use case for Illuminati by far. Most of our customers um, collect online data to gain better understanding of their consumer demands. Um, since COVID, we see in just eight weeks that e-commerce slipped forward by more than 10 years. This is crazy. I mean. The numbers that we expected to see in 2030, we see them today, and it's not gonna go back, okay? So for example, once reluctant cons uh, consumers have been shifting online, for example, senior citizens, they will remain online. The, the, and this is specific group of the senior citizens, no one ever expected them to go online. And you have lots of new groups like that that shifted online and will remain there. So e-commerce is obviously growing and the same is happening in correlation to the data collection process. You have more e-commerce players, they need to, you have more competition, they need to gain more competitive advantage, it means that they need to uh, collect more data. Now, in terms of trends of what we're seeing, we're seeing that they're investing more and more in automating their data collection processes. It's not just the understanding of we need the data, let's do it, it's also the understanding, okay, data will become a commodity. So we need to automate it and even outsource it to the experts. So this is one of the trends that we're seeing in e-commerce. And what are some of the other uh, industry domains that data collection is expanding into now more than ever? Yeah, so if we see that e-commerce is growing, obviously, as we, as we talked, so right after, after it, we see the brand protection uh, use case is growing also. So what it means, brand protection means these companies that try to protect the e-commerce ecosystem, for example, fighting fake products or monitoring um, resellers of bigger brands or protecting IP and so on. So as e-commerce is growing, also the surrounding use cases are growing, for example, brand protection. We also see that um, the finance sector is, is booming also in everything related to collecting online data. Banks, financial institutes, um, investment firms, for example, they all understand that they have more relevant data than if by having more relevant data from their competitors, they will gain this significant edge and eventually it all equals more dollars for these guys. And so for all these industry domains that are looking to build or expand their data collection operations, what should they be looking for now and what should their first steps be? 
Sure. So I can think of three main tips for, for everyone who's starting, no matter if it's a small startup or for two people uh, operation or a big company that just went online in, in you know, in more significant way. So first one is never, it's not, it's never too early to start collecting data, right? So but you can just start small. My suggestion is just identify the, the biggest problem you want to solve in the business, so not in data collection. And then one of the ways to understand what is the solution is also, also to identify what data will help you to solve it. And focus only on that specific problem and what data you need to collect to solve it. The second tip is uh, following the first one is start manually. It's very important because first you need to understand the process. Now, remember, you are, as the business owner, you are the real user, right? You, the real user is going to that website, clicking on that button and finding that price or whatever it will be. Do it also just for the process. It will also help you in the future to set the ex expectations with the, the external vendor that you will work with. And the third and, and last tip is probably that after you understand yourself and do it yourself just to make sure the data is right, it has, helps you to solve the, the problem. Now you need to scale up. To scale up, remember, it's not your core technology to collect the data. It's an, an, something that will enable you to, uh, do better, to do better business. Okay, So let the experts do the high-scale data collection. Now, now that you've provided some of those great tips, uh, flip things around a little bit. Uh, can you maybe talk about the pros and cons uh, to relying on an external uh, operation or building your own internal operation for data collection? Sure. So I think it's, it's all about effectiveness. Uh, if in old days, for example, um, you, you had a, an e-commerce website like 10 years ago, right? You, you had to do the billing infrastructure somehow. You, you had to charge the consumer that just made a purchase. In this case, you had to work hard. You had to um, do an integration with Visa and MasterCard. You had to be PCI compliance and so on. Today, it's easy. You, you need 15 minutes and to integrate with Stripe or some other billing vendor and you're done. This is where data is heading, okay? So data is moving in the same direction. It will become a commodity. So it's all about effectiveness. If you understand that your engineers should focus on their core business and uh, developing the propriety technology of your business, which usually it won't be data collection, right? It will be something else. Let them focus on that and not on the collateral uh, that enables it, like data or billing and so on. Having said that, I do recommend that you will have the in-house ability to do the, some validation processes for the data. You need to pick the right vendor that will provide you the data that you need in the right time, in the right format, uh, and, and, and qualified and, and all of that. But I do recommend to keep some in-house abilities to validate the data you, that you got on your own because eventually you are about to get some major decisions in real time, all the time, constantly based on that data. So it better be good. Well, that's great. And, you know, we've gotten a lot of information today on this call. Uh, but before I let you go, you know, where's the best place for viewers go to go if they want to learn even more uh, about what you guys are doing? Sure. So you can just visit our website. It's luminati.io. We have lots of content, including blogs, uh, recorded and live webinars that we're doing, like really professional webinars. Um, when it's not COVID days that we can't fly, we do um, workshops around the world, flying and, and you know, do meetups and workshops um, for any level. We even uh, lecture in universities and things like that. And everything is very well documented in our website, illuminati.io. And you can always reach out to me directly in my LinkedIn. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions on this topic, always. Great. Well, hopefully uh, we'll all be able to get back together uh, in person soon so that uh, yeah. you know, we can do that. Uh, uh, all right. Well, great. Or, well, thanks again for spending time with BM Blog uh, today. And I uh, hope we, you have a you know, great rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks for having me.